first a handful of plants did the wrong thing. You know, if, if some of these vendors or co uh, contract plants or subcontractors would have followed the rules, we wouldn't have been in this situation. Why? We don't always know for sure, but we've done a lot of investigation, and it seems to be a couple of things. One, some honest mistakes, just unfortunately buying the wrong paint or using the wrong supplier. But clearly in some cases, there was some subcontracting of parts beyond what we had approved in the supply chain. How do we prevent recurrence, particularly of this lead paint issue? First of all, the Chinese government got involved and has, has closed scores of underperforming plants, whether they be in toys or food or drugs. We've added more testing, redundant testing systems to make sure that we're doing more inspections, more testing, more monitoring of all of these plants, whether they're Mattel plants, and we make about half of our toys in our own plants, or vendor or outsourced plants. And those receiving our products, whether they be our retail partners here in the U.S., like Walmart or Toys R Us, or whether they be importing countries like Brazil, are certainly uh, adding more scrutiny as well. The second issue, the magnet issue, is really completely different. The issue here is that the magnets can become dislodged from the plastic toy itself. And the reason for that is that the glue just doesn't always hold. It's not a manufacturing issue. And some people confused it with a manufacturing issue. So what have we done to fix this? Instead of just using glue, what we've done now is figured out a way to embed, literally lock the magnet inside of the plastic toy so it can't get out. And this was a, a, a piece of encouraging news in all of this, is the way this system was developed is regulators from several countries in the world, our competitors and Mattel got together and developed new standards for how we use these plastics, these uh, magnets and plastic toys. And uh, we adopted those standards earlier than other people. And once we had experience with that system, decided to recall the old products, whether they were problematic or not. But one message that we want to make sure people understand, and you can help us here, is that countries don't make products. Companies and people do. And uh, there was a lot of criticism of countries. And of course, as these things go, not only was it of great media interest, it became of political interest here in the United States. The first politician I ran into on this issue was from my home state of Illinois, Senator Dick Durbin. He called me in and I went there to Chicago to visit with him uh, late one Friday afternoon. And I have to tell you, I was incredibly impressed with the senator. He sat there for 30 minutes and listened to what happened to Mattel. He was very intent on listening, which I found to be quite unusual in this crowd. But he, he was very helpful. Of course, at the end of it, he said, great, Bob, I'm glad we heard all this, but now we need to tell this to the American people, so let's have some hearings. So he invited us to Washington. We participated in hearings at both the Senate and House level. And here's how uh, Chairman Durbin uh, summarized his hearing. Let me thank Mr. Keithley, Mr. Storch, Mr. Eckert in particular, and say that over the course of my congressional career, there have been times when I've been tough on businesses. Uh, and I, I really have been heartened by and refreshed by the response of your industry to this crisis. Um, I think there is a level of openness and honesty that is essential for restoring the confidence in your products uh, and to bring your consumers back to your stores and back to your company. Um, there's no corporate denial going on here. There's no defensive crouch. There's no throwing around of the terms junk science. I mean, you're facing this honestly, and I think that's the only way to deal with it. I'm glad that you are. I commend you for doing that. Of course, you have to follow through, and we'll watch you as this process unfolds. You know, the overarching lesson in all of this for me is something we've all learned many times over from our parents. It's just be straight with people. If you tell people what happened, you apologize to them for it happening, and you tell them what you're going to do to prevent it from happening again, they're with you. And um, he was very helpful to us. What really happens here is our issue became good fodder for trade and regulation issues, for China issues, China bashing, and Bush bashing because these toys are manufactured overseas in China. We as an industry are regulated by the Consumer Product Safety Commission here in this country that under the Republican administration had been downsized and here is an opportunity 
for people to bash free trade and to bash a Republican administration. But throughout all this, there were some lessons learned for all of us that I'd like to share with you. One is to have a crisis plan in place. Fortunately, um, we have a thick document that sits on my desk that is a crisis plan. And we didn't get the crisis right, but at least we knew how we would respond to a crisis, who was where, who was on the ground, where we needed to be. Because remember, in the case of Mattel, you know, fewer than 10% of Mattel's people live and work in Southern California, and the majority of our employees don't live in this country. So it's important to have the communication lines and the plan set up to deal with that. Teamwork was important. We had no silos. We had meetings every day. We didn't have people pointing finger between marketing and manufacturing and distribution and testing and all those things. The team uh, that works on Mattel really stepped up. We had daily meetings twice a day at 7 in the morning and 4 in the afternoon every day, seven days a week, uh, roughly from uh, July, the end of July, through Christmas. Um, that way we could talk to our counterparts in Asia and work the clock 24 hours a day. We were consistent with our communication, and you heard it in some of my messages there. Every audience we talked to, we apologized. Doesn't make any difference whether you're a parent living in China or whether you're a parent living in the United States or whether you're a congressman. We're sorry. You shouldn't have to worry about this, and we shouldn't have to be here. Let me tell you what happened, and let me tell you what we're going to do to fix it. It was an interesting observation to determine who steps up. You know, we had some people in Mattel that really did a wonderful job last year, and in a crisis were the ones who really led the effort. And finally, we were fortunate to have really strong partnerships. We had folks who were running the business every day who weren't involved with the crisis. We had people, you know, people ask me, Bob, were you distracted by this? No, we worked on it pretty much full time. Fortunately, we had other people who were working on the toy business full time. We had um, good communications and partnerships between our company and regulators around the world, not just here in the United States, and very importantly, with our retail customers. You know, while we're in the news, they're the ones every single day, these toys are on their shelves and they have to deal with parents of what's good and what's not good, and it's a big, big challenge for them. And uh, fortunately, we had strong partnerships with them. In fact, one of the ideas I got from one of our retail partners, I was on a trip on a Saturday morning, late in the year, uh, early December, and we were just talking about what could we do to stimulate sales across this um, uh, important customer to us for the Christmas season. And it wasn't really talking about lead paint, it was talking about what can we do to make sure we have people in stores and people feel good. And going home that Saturday afternoon, I, I had the idea, you know what we need to do? We need to stop talking about lead paint. People are tired of it, and let's remind people why they buy toys. So we're not big on corporate kind of advertising. We tend to advertise our specific brands like Barbie or Hot Wheels. But we put together an ad very quickly in a campaign that was as much toy industry advertising as it was anything else to remind people about the joys of toys and here's what it was. While you're young, having so much fun, keep your smile so wide. Little one. Never lose that magic Keep it there deep inside your heart Little one, have fun And the good news was, there was Christmas, toys sold, and uh, we're here to talk about it. We had a pretty good year, all things considered, in 2007. There was widespread recalls. Uh, widespread awareness of the recalls. You know, 90% of people, not just here, but in other important countries around the world were aware. The majority of those people thought we did a, a reasonably good job handling them. Our sales grew for the year. Our profits grew despite $110 million worth of recall costs last year. But probably the thing I'm most proud of is within the last month or so, we were named um, one of the 100 best companies to work for by Fortune magazine. And the way you get on this list isn't a letter that I write to them. It's a fact that they survey our employees. And they were surveying our employees right in the midst of this crisis. And our employees felt good about the company they work for. So to come full circle on where I started, you can see the headline there. Mattel CEO recalls a tough summer. It wasn't all vacation at Silver Lake. Uh, but I've enjoyed having the opportunity to share the story with you. 
Um, we can all learn from this. I know I have, and I'm hopeful you have as well. And I wish you all the very best in a great conference. Thank you.